Previously on third party guys who are grinning. I've got an awesome swindle, niche and banal. The leg filler flaps are the new ankle tilt. And now the epic conclusion. This is Toy World Swamper, as in a guy who gets a lot of water in the rowboat. I think they probably meant it to mean a guy who does swamp stuff, but it doesn't matter what they meant. I got him because he's Skull Cruncher. That's what I'm going to call him. Now, the first thing you might notice about this guy is that he looks completely ridiculous. But on the plus side, he looks completely ridiculous. Skull Cruncher, you see, is an alien robot warrior who chooses to disguise himself as a giant, brightly colored alligator. His primary weapon is his mouth. Not exactly the most serious or deadly offense when compared with your Magnus Hammers or your Heisenberg Swords. I mean, yeah, if you're a herbivore at the watering hole, then you're going to be in trouble. But if you have the speed and maneuverability and lack of need to go to the watering hole of, oh, I don't know, say a car, then it's hard to imagine how he's ever going to get his lips around you. My point being, this is an intrinsically goofy concept. And the reason this toy works so staggeringly well is that Toy World took the Goofy and ran with it, and it just gives him all the charisma in the world. Look at his big stupid grin and his body language that, no matter how you pose him, always seems to be saying, God damn, it's great to be a robot alligator. Let's wrestle. While striking and handsome, he's not what you might call bursting with details, which, combined with the bright colors, does kind of make him look a little bit like a cartoon character, which, you know, technically is exactly what he is. I've got a fair few robots, and my reactions on them range from grudging acceptance to pure toy joys, but this is the only one that consistently makes me giggle like a schoolgirl. What? It's hard to giggle on cue. He's got a pair of guns all rounded and chubby like kitty scissors, which he can store in a variety of locations. And his tail comes apart into no fewer than four electric carving knives just in time for Thanksgiving. Now. Logic says four carving knives is perhaps too, too many, but Skull Cruncher logic says I have extra fists hidden in my gator feet. These things do get in the way a bit, but if they bother you, you can pop them off or move them down to his legs or chain them together with the tail to make the ultimate alligator body part flail weapon you know you've secretly always wanted. Which, yes, is dumb, but my point is the accessories are fun. And as a bonus, he's got a super secret second robot mode you'd only know about if you looked at the promo photos or the box or the instructions. You swap his fists, I pre-swapped these fists this morning, turn his waist around, and then turn the head, which is very firmly ratcheted, for no reason. And there you have it. The gator back legs have to parts form for this, or at least peg back in on the back, but if you want the G1 chest, there it is. Speaking of the box, I've been told people review those, so let's have a look. It's uh, rectangular, and you can tell it's a good box because no portion of Swamper was outside of it when it arrived. It successfully prevented his escape. Like a box. Back on sort of topic, this leg transformation I've been using is actually wrong. They're supposed to go up here like this, but this way looks better, prevents paint rub, and gives him enough height to hang out on the MP shelf and send the average dignity crashing into the toilet. The only trade-off is a little bit of minor acceptable gappiness. And of course his head comes off. I'll be the first to admit that the heads aren't quite as good as the Vance Project guys. The face doesn't even try to hide, and these ball-jointed legs love to pop off during transformation. But, you know, it's fine, it'll do. It's a tiny guy that turns into a face. There's kind of a built-in awesomeness limit. Transformation's pretty old school with a bit of minor cleverness to hide the arms. There's a few clicky joints that are a bit too tight, but mostly it's easy and fun. Toy World stepped their QC game way, way up since Hegemon. Even the parts that are overly stiff, I'm never afraid I'm going to break them. Everything's smooth and heavy like a velvet sledgehammer. The knee ratchets have a particularly joyous heft to them. Just when you were prepared to say the robot mode is the goofiest thing you've ever seen, he goes and does this. It's huge and stompy with jagged teethy pegs that should probably have been picked out in silver instead of black. He's ridiculously stubby and chubby, but still somehow looks like he could wreck your face if he ever managed to catch you. You can store his guns on his hips just in case he wasn't wide enough already, and of course, Headmaster General here can fit in the cockpit, because what good is an alligator without a pilot?
Advanced Projects just unveiled their Skull Cruncher, and it's got a badass alt mode and a styling robot mode and an elegant transformation, and those are all normally things I like, but not on Skull Cruncher. What I want from Skull Cruncher is pretty much this, in all its dumb, chubby funness. I don't really have a solid ending for this review, so I'll just leave you with this. I'm too crunchy for your skull, too crunchy for your skull, so crunchy the fans project version looks comparatively dull.